Okay, so in, in the grouping videos, we bumped into a let clause, and the let clause introduced transparent identifiers, which is fine. A little detour while we're doing the grouping videos. But now, I want to come back to that let clause and those transparent identifiers. I want to do a little bit more of an involved example so you can see how important the transparent identifiers are, and also how useful a let clause can be. So I have here A, Bs, and Cs, which I'm going to call coefficients of the uh, of a quadratic formula. If you don't know what a quadratic formula is because uh, you didn't take your math, whatever, that's fine. Go check out Khan Academy if you want to learn. Otherwise, I think you'll probably, you'll, you'll still kind of get the idea of what I'm going through here. But um, I found this, uh, this uh, quadratic formula explained from purplemath.com. Here's the formula. In fact, I'll zoom in, control plus, 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 plus. This is the formula that we're going to code up here, all right? So I got Bs and I got Cs and I got As. And look at that, we got Bs and Cs and As. So let's let's uh, roll with that and I'm going to put this formula where I can see it a little bit better on the bottom of my screen. So let's let's I have three inputs here, three three uh, sets of coefficients. I want to want to run the quadratic formula on each one. So let's do var result gets from and we'll say coef. Okay, coefficient and inputs. And then I'm going to heavily use let here to try to make this thing more readable. Okay. First of all, with the quadratic formula, let me bring this back up. Notice we have to do this plus or minus thing. We kind of have to run this thing twice. There could be zero roots, one root, or no roots, right? And Or zero roots. <laughs> zero roots, one roots, or two roots. Okay. So we actually have to run this thing twice with one for the plus and one for the minus. So we're going to you got to see this. This works out quite nicely. First of all, we need a uh, negative b. So let neg b, neg b equal negative coefficient dot b. Okay. Let now this this b squared minus 4ac right here. This part here is called the discriminant. Okay. And I actually had to Google this word and so I could spell it right because I. I not a spelling pro by any means. Um, the discriminant is going to be uh, b squared minus 4ac. So it's going to be the coefficient dot b times the coefficient coefficient dot b uh, minus 4 times coefficients dot a times coefficients dot c. Okay, there's the discriminant. And then let 2a equal 2 times the coefficient dot A. Alright, now I want to select new. I'm going to use anonymous type here. I'm going to span it out on multiple lines because I think it'll be a little more readable if we do. New. Okay, there could be up to two roots. So I'm going to say the first root is neg B plus the discriminant. Discriminant. Uh, we have to wrap that in parentheses because we have to divide the whole thing by 2a. And then the second root, well it's the same as the first root, but I'll actually type it out here. Second root, ah, come on, second root equals negative b. But instead we're going to minus the discriminant and divide that by 2a. Okay? So hopefully that's, you can see now that, that instead of having to like especially the, in the case of the discriminant. I don't have to take this, copy it, and paste it here, and paste it here. This is These let clauses have really allowed my, me to make some uh, nice, clean query here. I can say the first root is negative b plus the discriminant divided by 2a, and the second root is negative b minus the discriminant divided by 2a. Nice readability. That's good. Maintainability of code. All that kind of stuff. All right, well, let's translate this. We've got three let clauses, and each one turns into a select. So let me show you the... The headache, the compiler, well, yeah, it is headache, why not? The headache the compiler has to go through in order to make this thing work. So, result 2, and again, as always, the from clause defines the variable name and also the source name. So, I'm going to come down here and inputs, okay, the let clause turns into a select. So, select, right, and then the variable name is coef, oops, coef, lambda, and then neg b, equals coef dot b. Now remember, we had to, with these let clauses, it packs them into these anonymous types, these temporary types that get sent on. So I'm going to say new, just like we did with the previous let clause video. I'm going to say new, 
and I need to throw COF into the pile, and then negative B equals negative COF B, all right? And then, oh, here's another let clause, so dot select, delete, delete, delete. And then what's coming into the select? Okay, what's coming into the select is the output of the above select. Well, the output or the transform of the above select is it took this COF and transformed it into this anonymous type that stores COF and also this new variable name called neg B, which has a value to it. Okay, so the input is, I'm going to call this, this is transparent identifier, TP1. And the reason I'm putting a 1 there is because we're going to have more than one, actually. So TP1. And then, uh, just again, the let clause is going to, it's a new, yet another anonymous type. Now, just like I grabbed this COF and packed it into this anonymous type up here, I just repeat the process, TP1. I'm going to transparent, I'm going to pack that transparent identifier into another transparent identifying anonymous type here. So, anyway, got to go to the end of this line. It's kind of lengthy, I know. And then, okay, next line. Whew. Another let. I'll go figure. Select. Okay, and this is going to be transparent identifier 2, which is sent in from this. This is the, the, the this select sends in this transparent identifier up here, down into here. So yet, so this is our first, this is TP1s coming in right here. And these are TP2s coming in right here. Well, you know, it's a let clause. It's the same thing over and over again. New, and again, like we did here, we grab this, put it here, grab this, put it here, grab this, put it right here. TP2, and then the same variable name, put a curly out there, parenthesis. Oh, and then we're finally to a real select right here. So let's do it. Dot, uppercase, what's coming into here? Well, it's our third transparent identifier, so TP3 arrow, right? This, These are our TP3s coming into here, all right? And we're returning this new, first root is all this stuff. Well, now there's neg B indiscriminate and 2A is all hiding in this TP3. Let's see if we can find them, all right? So I'm space space, TP3, and remember, all these are transparent. And by transparent, meaning the compiler can kind of see through them, right? So we're going to look into them and kind of see through them like the compiler does. So TP3, well, first of all, where's neg B? Neg B, oh, we got red squigglies. Let's figure out, why do we got the red squigglies? Oh, duh, COF. Where's COF going to sit? It's going to sit in TP1. So I actually have to say TP1.COF, TP1.COF. TP1.COF, TP1.COF, whew, okay. But now down here, look at this level. Where's COF? Well, COF is in TP2's, TP1's. That makes sense? COF's all the way up here, so to get back to COF, I have to look through TP2 into TP1, which has COF. So here we go, TP2.TP1.COF. Okay, and that's why it's nice is these are transparent. It's kind of like they're not there to the compiler. Transparent. Does the animation help? I don't know. Maybe the animation helps. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe none of these videos help. Who knows? Uh, two A is uh, two times all that. Okay. So now down here. Okay. Where is neg B hiding out? Well, neg B is hiding out in TP3s, TP2s, TP1, neg B. All right, so TP3.TP2.TP1. There's neg B. Okay, nicer. That's transparent, isn't it? Uh, discriminant. Discriminant is hiding out in TP3s, TP2s. Discriminant here. So TP3. TP2, now if I wanted 2A, I could grab it out of 2, 3, but TP2 dot uh, discriminant. Okay, good. Uh, now, now I want 2A. Well, 2A is not too far behind. It's TP3, 2A, right? So TP3 dot, there's 2A. All right, nice and transparent. Neg B again is in, I'm going to bring this back a little bit. Let's line these. TP3 dot, TP2 dot, TP1 dot, neg B. Discriminant, again, TP3, dot TP2, dot discriminant, and then 2A is hanging out 
and just TP3, not too far away. Okay? Woo! <sighs> Transparent identifiers, let clauses. What else do you want to know? <laughs>